What's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabe Root, just on the Fan TV, man. Back at you another video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos. Uh, so let's get into today's topic, man. So um, obviously we getting closer and closer to training camp. So I'm trying to do like, I don't know, two or three videos a week just because there's not a lot to talk about right now that's like Ravens related. I don't really like doing a whole bunch of lists, you know, over and over again. But um, today we are going to do a little bit of a list, all right? So uh, we want to talk about the top three X factors, I think, going into this Ravens season. As of right now, things could change. But these are just three people that I was thinking about on top of my head right now um, that could have a, a major impact on how this season goes, right? I try to stay away from the obvious players that we already know, like, you know, Lamar Jackson, Roquan Smith, Marlon Humphrey, like the guys that we know are going to be there to um, make or break the season, right? I try to stay away from those kind of guys, right? So um, it's going to be one on offense, one on defense, and then one that helps both sides of the ball. So let's, help, let's start with the one that helps both sides of the ball. I think uh, one X factor for this team is going to be the training staff, right? Now, why the training staff? So, the Ravens fired Steve Saunders, controversial coach, wasn't liked by pretty much anybody in the building, it sounds like, except for maybe uh, John Harbaugh, because, you know, that was one of his closest friends or whatever. Um, had questionable methods, to say the least, called out by numerous players for saying that they pushed him too hard, caused re-injury, and even maybe cost some of these players their NFL careers, right? So, besides just being um, apparently bad at his job, also insubordinate when it came to the whole COVID thing and not wearing a mask and all of that. Um, Ravens got rid of him this uh, this offseason. So what does this new training staff add to the team? Do they um, do the Ravens injuries, injury rate go down? Does it are they stronger throughout the season? What really changes? I think that's kind of an unknown X factor to this. Right. Because, look. Steve Saunders needed to go, and he probably needed to go in 2020 after he disobeyed the um, the COVID protocols. That was kind of, it got a lot of the team sick. That was probably, should have been the last straw. But he was there two years after that still. Um, but anyway, what is going to change now that he's not there, right? Now, the environment hopefully is probably better. They don't have to deal with them. You know, like I can say he wasn't very popular, wasn't very well liked. But in terms of what changes as far as as, does the team stay healthier? Does the team have, is it stronger ending the season, right? Do we not have as many guys being injured? Um, because, listen, man, the Ravens and injuries have been kind of synonymous over these last couple of years. And it's hard to say that it was all on Steve Saunders, but he certainly played his part and he played his role in that. So with him being gone, does this team stay healthy? Does this team um, excel now without a, uh, I guess, a, Lack of a better word, an asshole as a strength and conditioning coach. You know what I'm saying? I really can't think of no other ways to, uh, to call the guy from where, how he's been described, right? The Ravens got an F minus on that report from the NFLPA regarding their training. So um, they were pretty harsh on them, right? So, and it seems pretty fair. All right. Um, so, new new uh, head, sorry, new uh, strength and conditioning coach, I believe his name is Scott Elliott. He's been with the Ravens for a couple of years. Uh, but now this is his first time as being the uh, the head guy. We'll see what he does. We'll see if it has any type of effects, any type of, um, you know, uh, uh, positive benefits for the Ravens. Right. That's what I'm looking for. That's one X factor. All right. All right. Another X factor. We're going to do this one on offense. And uh, we're going to talk about our, our, our star left tackle, Ronnie Stanley. Right now, Ronnie Stanley. I know I'm going to say we're from the star players, but Ronnie Stanley, even though he is a star, it's been hard to get games out of him. And this is the reason why he's the X Factor, okay? Ronnie Stanley played 11 games last year, right? So it started all 11. I think he, I think, he, correct me if I'm wrong, the only game he didn't finish that he played in was the Carolina game when he got hurt. So um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyway, the Ravens were 7-4 and four in the games that Ronnie Stanley started, played in. They were 7-4. and four. They were 3-3 three and three in the games that he did not play in, all right? Now, there's a whole bunch of factors that can go into that. You know, who they're playing, opponents, um, a whole bunch of different things that can go into that. And obviously, a part of them is some of the games that the Ravens had handily won and blew, right? But Ronnie Stanley is an anchor to this offensive line. He's one of, if not maybe the most important pieces on that offensive line, right? When he plays, the offensive line feels more stable. It feels like a, a good unit, right? Now, the offensive line, I think, without Ronnie Stanley, is probably an average unit, right? But with, with him, he takes him to above average to good, right? Just because of 
what he can do on that left side. And I think Lamar Jackson is just more comfortable with Ryan Stanley out there, all right? He doesn't have to worry so much about that left side, all right? Um, so, to me, the X factor for Ryan Stanley is how many games do we get out of Ryan Stanley this year? Um, 11 um, is great in a way because, you know, he, he's coming off 2020 uh, where he didn't – sorry, not, not 2020, excuse me. 2021 where he only played the one game. He got injured that very first game versus the Raiders. Then uh, 2020, I think he only played six games. So 11 is a, obviously is an increase, right? But being the type of player that he is, being one of the highest paid players on the team, we want to see him play more than 11 games. We want to see if he can give us that full 17 game season. And if he does, that solidifies our Ravens offensive line, especially when there's this hole right now, our left guard, that a competition is up for grabs, right? And for that guy who is um, going to end up getting that job at left guard, whether it's John Simpson, Brent Cleveland, you know, Salah, the rookie, whoever, you know, even if it's up for Lele, I don't know. Having a presence like Ronnie Stanley to your left and then having Ty Linderbaum, who had a great rookie season right next to you, is going to make that left guard position even more solidified. So Ronnie Stanley's health is a major X factor for this Ravens season coming up. And if he can stay healthy, and solidify the offensive line, Ravens will be pretty good on the line. All right. Now, um, one more X factor, and he's on the defensive side of the ball, and he's also um, a, a lineman. So we're going to talk about Justin Matabike, right? Now, Justin Matabike, I think we're past the point of will he break out? I think we're kind of maybe, I think we're kind of past that. I think that last year he had a really good season, right? Um, I don't think it's the full-on breakout, like, you know, superstar that we noticed. But last year, he turned into a really, really good player, right? So why am I saying that if it's a really good player being an X-Factor? Okay. One, we've talked about the edge rushers to death, right? We know about Ojabo. We know about Odafi Owe. We know that we need those guys to produce on the outside, right? But some of the best ways to affect a quarterback is pass rush straight up the middle, all right? And Justin Madden, we can, can give you that. Last year... He had got it right here. He got he had five and a half sacks, which was an increase from uh, twenty twenty one when he only had two sacks. He played um, he played seventeen games, started sixteen games. Uh, let's see, forty two tackles, uh, eight TFLs, nine QB hits. So like he had a good season from the interior, but now it's going to be can he elevate past that? Because, listen, Calais Campbell is not here anymore, right? That's big down the middle, right? Now, obviously, you have Michael Pierce. You have Travis Jones who can do some of that to replace that. But Michael Pierce is coming off an injury, right? Now, he's had a whole lot of a time to prepare because he got injured um, early last season. But still, coming off an injury, over 30 years old. And Travis Jones, while I think he has a lot of time, a lot of potential, he is only a second-year player, right? Matt Abike is the guy that is in position to be, he's in his prime, he's a veteran, and we seen him do it last year. So if I'm the Ravens, I'm looking for a big year for Matt Abike, right? Five and a half sacks from the inside is really good. Like, you know, there's nothing to sneeze at, nothing to say like, oh, well, he should be doing more, right? But the question is, can he do more? Can he get at the eight sacks from the middle? Can he get at the nine sacks from the middle? Because, listen, man, quarterbacks, good quarterbacks at least, you get that pressure on the outside, they can step up, still deliver that ball, right? You know, as much as we do want edge rushers, and you do need them, you need multiple edge rushers, right? Um, good quarterbacks can figure a way out how to avoid them at times. But that pressure up the middle is way hard to avoid. Pressure coming right from the center guard area. Uh, no quarterback wants that. I remember um, that used to be the game plan going against a guy like Tom Brady, who, you know, who's obviously known for stepping up, pocket mobility, and um, if he can't step into the pocket, that hurts his throws, right? So think about that for any kind of elite quarterback. If they can't step up, how are they going to throw the football? There's only a couple of guys that you really have to worry about making these crazy kind of off-platform kind of throws, like, you know, how, how Mahomes or something like that can make those kind of throws, right? So I'm looking for Justin Matter BK to take it to the next level. Because in my mind, um, maybe not vocally, but he's the leader on the defensive line as of right now. You know, we'll see if Justin Houston comes back. Um, we'll see that what happens with that. But, and you know, I'm not saying he's got to be vocal like Calais because Calais is a different kind of leader. Obviously, you know, his voice is, you can hear from everywhere. But Matabika has to lead by example because this is, this, this is a big time for him. Also, it's a contract year for him, right? 
Uh, he's in the same boat as Patrick Queen. Um, you know, what the Ravens paying? What are they not paying? You know, we got to wait and see what's going on with that. So um, he has all the incentives to have a, another good season. Like last year, he had a really good year. This year, can he have a great season? And if he has a great season, um, that's going to help alleviate some of the pressure on Ojabo, on Owe to uh, to get sacked. Because if you can get him up the middle, that's all great right there. So, uh, listen, man, those are my three Ravens X Factors for this season. Uh, you guys comment down below your Ravens X Factors. And if you stay to this point in the video, man, consider hitting that subscribe button. As we get closer to the training camp, more videos are going to come out. Um, so, yeah, man, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. It's Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.